Unit 21, measuring height and weight. So again, uh, measuring ambulatory weight is another one of your five measurement skills tested by Pearson View. So weight and height measurements. So changes in weight are frequently used as an indicator of a patient's condition. So um, so specifically somebody who has maybe congestive heart failure, we're going to be wanting to see if they're having weight changes. Are they retaining fluid? Somebody who's given certain medications like a diuretic that is, um, increases urine output, we're going to want to be finding out what is their weight status and how is this in, um, relating to their condition. So again, it's an important measurement and it is used uh, frequently to kind of determine um, how the patient's overall health status is. So baseline measurements of height and weight are usually obtained upon admission. So again, it's one of those um, admission assessments that will be done just to get a, give you a baseline measurement of what this person weighs. So also, you know, if they're losing weight because they're not ha having adequate nutrition. So there's a lot of different things that can be related to changes in height and weight. So and then again, it's noted on Cardex, or it may be noted in different places depending on the facility that you work with, work in. They may do weekly weights on every patient in like a long-term care facility, or it may be done um, kept in the patient's chart in the acute care setting. So it just depends on your facility's policy on where these measurements are kept. So weight is frequently measured when get the patient is given drugs to increase urine output. So again, we talked about that. If the patient's been given a diuretic, um, we're going to be measuring their weight to find out, you know, what what their status is. How, you know, is there a change in their weight status? And then it's also a good indicator of patient's nutritional status. So if the patient is losing a lot of weight, um, having changes in weight, having changes in in their nutritional status, you may be doing weight more frequently. It may be used as a measurement to their overall health status. So you're going to record a a accurately according to facility policy. And again, it's really, really important that it's accurate because changes in weight are going to be used um, by healthcare providers to determine kind of course of action. So if they've lost too much weight, are they going to be making some dietary changes? Are they going to be adding a supplement? And so making sure that you're getting an accurate weight so that the healthcare team has a good um, picture of, the, of kind of what the weight is compared to their overall health. And then medications may be ordered according to each patient's size. So especially in pediatrics, medications are um, weight specific. So it's very, very important that you have an accurate weight so that, that you're giving the, medica uh, the medication an appropriate dosage depending on the size of, of the person. So again, you know, a three-month-old infant versus a 150-pound adult. So just making sure that you kind of are aware of how important that is because there are um, decisions made upon your, your weight that you're given to your healthcare provider, and so you want to make sure it's very accurate. So height and weight measurements. So height measurements are done in feet, which you can see um, sort of the one uh, apostrophe mark up there, that, that's the indication of feet, inches with two or centimeters. So again, making sure you know what your facility wants you to document in. So whether you're doing it in feet and inches or whether you're doing it in centimeters. And then weight measurements, um, pounds versus kilograms. So, uh, you know, if, if they're wanting you to record the measurement in pounds, making sure that you're recording it accurately and that you're putting pound behind the measurement. So they know that's a pound weight, not a kilogram weight. So um, pounds are going to be 2.2 times what the kilograms are. So again, it's important that the, the healthcare provider knows the specific measurements and what it's being measured in. So reading the balance scale. So we have two balance scales in the classroom that we'll practice with. Um, and so you've, you may have actually utilized these before. Um, you know, they have the same type of scales at the gym and things like that. So for an accurate value, the balance bar must hang freely at the beginning. And again, you, part of your steps of your skill is to make sure that the it's zeroed out before the patient steps on the scale. So similar to, as we talked to with the blood pressure cuff, making sure it's zeroed out, you want to make sure you have an accurate reading. And so so it's zeroed out before the person steps onto the scale. And again, we'll talk about that in Skills Lab. So the lower bar, which I'll show you a schematic here in a minute, it measures in 50 pound increments. So it's going to start at 50, then 100, 150, 200, etc. And then the upper bar, it measures in quarter pound increments. So here's how it looks. So 
you have the small weight indica indicator at the top there, so that's going to give you um, more precise kind of the, the small weight indicator, and then the large weight indicator is down at the bottom, so it's going to get you to, you know, the in 50 pound increments. So what you're going to do first as you're weighing somebody is move the large weight indicator first. So you're going to move um, that over to the 100. It's very, very important that you make sure, especially that large weight indicator, it's in the notch there. And so there's two different um, scale types. There's one where you'll actually as the schematic shows where you'll actually read the number through the opening and so you can see that hundred that way you know it's in the correct placement but you also want to make sure that it's in the notch because let's see if that large weight indicator was situated a little bit you know halfway between that 50 and 100 not in the notch that would then be 75 pounds okay so making sure you 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 do the large weight indicator first and that you make sure that it's firmly in the notch and you can read that number through it um, so that you're getting an accurate result. And then you're going to move the small weight indicator over to the right um, until the balance bar drops all the way. And then you're going to have to um, nudge it back to the left until you find where the bar is completely balanced. And then that's going to be the person's weight. So again, this will make a lot of sense when we practice it in skills lab. And for your state testing, you have to be within two pounds of the tester, the proctor's reading. And so we'll really practice about what that looks like when you're weighing somebody in person. So measuring the bedfast patient. So again, there may be some patients who aren't able to get out of bed, who aren't able to do an ambulatory weight, who aren't even able to do a wheelchair weight. So, um, and they talk about the different types of scales, so sling scales, all those kinds of things. But there are some people who aren't um, able to leave the bed. So making sure that we get accurate readings on them as well. So you're going to make sure you straighten the bottom sheet until it's free from wrinkles. So you have a really good, nice um, surface to work on. You're going to make a small mark with a pen on the sheet at the top of the patient's head. So what you're going to do is mark the top of their head um, on the sheet itself. And then um, with a tape measure, carefully measure the patient's body from head to heels. So you make a mark on the sheet at the heels. So what you're doing is you're going to be measuring the distance between where you marked as the head and where you marked at the heels. You're going to turn the patient on the side and then measure the distance between the marks on the sheet. And so those of you with kids, you may have seen this um, done when they go get their well child checks as well. because. Uh, children, um, toddlers especially, are somewhat difficult to measure. So, you know, making a mark, making a mark, and then measuring between the two marks. So trying to be as accurate as possible. So measuring the contracted patient. So if you have a patient who's contracted in the fetal position, you're going to have to obtain the height in two or three segments. So it's really important, again, that for, for accuracy, that we try to get every segment of the body. And because of the contracted um, nature of the patient, it, you're going to have to do that in two or three segments. So the position, um, you're going to position the patient in the side lying position. And what you're going to do is, again, do different segments of the body. So you're going to um, measure from the top of the head to the waist and write down that number. You're going to measure then from the waist till behind the knees and write down that measurement. And then from behind the knees to the bottom of the he of heels. So what you're doing is you're breaking the body up in segments because you're not able to, to um, stretch that person out. So you're going to add all of these numbers together and that will be your total height measurement. So again, it's not completely perfectly accurate, but it's as good as we are able to do in with the patient in a contracted position. So you want to make sure that you're trying to be as accurate as possible you know with those specific measurements so when they add up to a whole it's going to be a more accurate accurate total height measurement and so you'll have um, you know hopefully practice with this in a clinical setting and we will be practicing doing weights in class because that is another one of your um, measurement skills for Pearson view